Welcome to the Discover Montcalm podcast, where we're going to take a look at the communities, the businesses, the attractions, and the people that make up Montcalm County. Here is your podcast host, Dwayne Reed. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Discover Montcalm podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I have Valerie Vandermark here. Valerie, thank you for taking time to come in and talk to us. Val has her hands in many things. Um, <laughs> The last time you and I got together, it was over the pandemic. That's right. Um, let's go back to that time. You know, we'll kind of bring people up to speed on, um, you know, I knew of you, you knew of me, but we really hadn't done much. Um, what was the project we did in 2020? Well, I had a choir, a group of choir from Montcalm Community College, and the choir members still wanted to do something. And I had seen, you know, on the on computers or whatever, internet, people putting songs together. And I didn't know how difficult that was, so I called you because yes. I'm not the techie. But, um, and we decided we were gonna try doing that. We actually did two songs. One was, because commencement was gonna be different. The choir did a song for commencement. Right. So what we did is we went around to different locations within Montcalm County and we would have them do the choir part, and then we'd have them do the music part. Uh, so we had two songs, and everywhere from, you know, you know, Stanton. I can't even remember all the places we went. But <laughs> Sheridan, Stanton, uh -huh. and you know, you had set up, you know, you had coordinated all these people. So these four people were going to be here. These four people were going to be here because we were still doing right. the keep everybody safe. Right. So. Fast forward to 2024, um, you're still working with the Montcalm County, or, excuse me, Montcalm Community College Alumni and Friends Choir. That's right. Um, yeah. that's, that's a little bit longer. <laughs> um, uh, how did that get started? Well, and that's why we have such a long name, because it began when the school began. We had Ken Smith, who was very musical. He was also a science teacher. But he started both the choir and the band. And um, so we had a college choir for a while. And when he decided that he just couldn't handle everything, he was going more into the science direction, they hired me to come and direct the choir. And so it began as a student choir. But then we would have people who would say, oh, that really sounds like fun. And we were doing it at lunchtime. So okay. we'd have people come in and sing with us. And pretty soon it kind of turned into a community choir. Um, this is kind of a longer story, but Ken also had another community choir, and eventually those two choirs merged. Okay. So we, when I was working full-time, we had students who were taking the choir for credit and community people who would come in also and just sing for fun. So the alumni and friends yes, so, kind, of, kind of made, yes. its, made its blend there right. over the... So what year did you get involved? Do you remember? I was hired just to direct the choir in 1982. Okay. And for a year or so, I just directed, I came in and, at lunch. I was also teaching elementary music in okay. Stanton at the time. So I would come in, I would direct the choir at lunch, and then I'd go to another job. And then the next year they said, well, you know, we'd really like a music theory teacher. So they hired me on for that. Okay. So each year, then the college kept adding courses and adding courses, and pretty soon I couldn't do two, <laughs> two part-time jobs. It was becoming two full-time jobs, basically. Right. So, um, so then they took me on full-time. And you were, you were full-time. When did you retire officially from Montcalm <laughs> Community <laughs> College? Because uh, I know you're still involved today. Right. But when did you officially you know, retire? I retired in 2016. Okay. And now it's for the love of it. Well, yeah, I get paid a little bit, but it's, well, <laughs> it's still know, for the love of it, for sure. But, you know, there, there's a passion. There's, Absolutely. There's a passion there. Um, you're also involved in other things throughout the, you know, community. Uh, what is your favorite? Or don't you have what a favorite? What is my favorite? Well, community theater was my favorite for a long time. And um, I actually met my husband in community theater, and we did a lot of community theater together. But then once the kids started getting older and we were, you know, being pulled in all different directions, we backed off of that a little bit. 
but I still have my fingers in the community theater pie a little bit. Um, last summer, I did music direction for Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, which is a uh, HCAT Hans Christian Andersen theater okay. production. So I've done some things for them. Um, my most recent was a group of retired, mostly teachers, women, when, uh, put together a play based on a children's book called The Day the Crayons Came Home. Okay. And I played Orange Crayon. Can you tell by my orange oh, fingernails? Oh, so, 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 so now, you're, and, and I like the shirt. <laughs> yes, It'll right. It'll make it MCC, but you've you, yes. you got this orange theme yes. about you. Yes, so we were all different colored crayons, and we just did a short little play, and I added some songs, a couple of songs. We went around to schools in mostly Montcalm County, but also Ionia County, and put them on. Your husband, Greg, is also very musical. Yes. And very talented in his acting and, and that. And uh, you're both kind of active in your church. Yes. Um, still doing that. You know, it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> we spent part of the summer together. We know what each other's doing, but we don't really cross paths. So it's been since 2020, right. basically since you and I have talked. So it's like, okay, catch me yeah. up on everything. Catch me <laughs> up on up everything. Now? Um, you know, and going back, did you grow up in Montcalm County? Give us a little back history. Okay, well, I am a West Michigan girl, but I was born in Big Rapids, mm -hmm. and then I moved to Grand Rapids. Then I went to college at University of Michigan on the other side of the I state. I love your license plate, by the way. Thank you. I love your license. You music. Go blue. Go blue. <laughs> um, you, you, you just kind of hit me up here on the studio. It says, my two favorite teams, Michigan, and anyone who beats Michigan State. And I guess you could add Ohio State under that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but yeah. anyways, that's that's another topic yeah. for another day. Exactly. So, so but, but I, I got a uh, degree in music education, and my first teaching job was in Greenville. Okay. So I started my teaching as an elementary music teacher with Greenville Public Schools. I was doing four different elementary schools at the time, so I was busy, busy, busy. Um, and I did that for five years until my um, middle son was born, and then I just took a year off. And then that year, the year after that, was when um, I got another job at Stanton Elementary, and a job at uh, MCC. Okay, so. so you've been in Montcalm County for a while. Yes, um, 1976. 19, wow, <laughs> that's... That's a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, <laughs> but I remember that because I, I was in high school uh, at that time because I graduated in 79 from Morley Stanwood. Okay. Um, so, you know, West Michigan, myself, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it's it's interesting how we take different paths and, you know, things kind of kind of flow. Absolutely. Um, we're going to take a quick moment right here and thank our sponsors. Don't forget, you can watch Discover Montcom podcast on YouTube. You can catch us on Instagram and Facebook at Discover Montcom podcast, or you can go to discovermontcompodcast.com, catch all the episodes. At the time of this recording, we're over 80, um, and we keep growing. So we're, we're looking for people from Montcalm County, like Val, who is doing things within this county. If you have a story, please reach out to me. So we'll be right back after these messages. We'd like to thank our sponsors. West Michigan Technology and Design Solutions is your perfect choice for managed IT, website design, website hosting, and consulting services. WMTDS.com, 616-485-7600. Custom Vinyl Signs and Busy Bee Embroidery and Gifts is your one-stop shop for embroidery, vinyl, screen printing, and engraving needs. Go to CVSDBusyBees.com or call 989-261-7446. And DW Video, your film and videotape specialist. They design websites and business videos that tell and share your story. DWVideo.com, 231-250-9624. Now, back to our podcast. Welcome back to the Discover Com podcast. My name's Dwayne, I'm the host and the producer. I have Val with me right now. Val, we talked a little bit about Montcalm Community College's alumni and friends choir. 
how can someone get involved with that? If, if anybody's out there listening and they go, you know, I like to sing, but am I of the right quality? You know, do I have to audition? You know, walk us through how somebody could get involved. Well, all you have to do is have the desire to sing. We don't have auditions. Um, and the college usually puts out a non-credit bulletin that goes out to um, everybody in Montcalm County, okay. as far as I know. And that will have the date for the next choir. We do two concerts a year, one in the fall and one in the spring. And uh, it'll tell when rehearsals start, and it'll give you the information about what you can do to sign up. You can either call the office or you can go online to our um, montcom.edu website okay. and um, find a place to sign up. And, uh, so it's really that easy. That's all, that's all you have to do. You have to commit yourself to about eight rehearsals. Okay. We usually have them Saturday mornings, but that sometimes can change. Sure. And then we, we put on a concert either, you know, November, December, and then again in eight, March or April. Okay. So because we're not promoting a particular concert, somebody picks this up a year from now, just go to motcom.edu. Right. Probably type in a choir, you know, alumni choir or something yes. along that line. It'll, it'll, you know, It'll you guys by, you by chance have a Facebook page or you just have that? MCC does have a Facebook page, so you can go there too. And uh, they often will post things about the choir and, and uh, okay. registering for that. So you said you started 1970s? 1976 in Greenville, in but Greenville. not at the college. That was 80? 80, 82. 82. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what has changed <laughs> over those years? I mean, because you come in and, you know, people singing is always the constant. Yes. You know, tunes have changed. Uh, but what has changed within the choir that you have seen um, between then and now? Oh, boy. Uh, well, where we've rehearsed has changed. We used to rehearse in the activities building, and then that turned into a cafeteria. And then we moved to a classroom building, and sometimes we went out to the barn theater. Mm -hmm. And I did have some classes for quite a while in the barn theater, and we did our concerts in the theater. It got a little too big. I mean, the concert and the attendees got a little too big, so we had to move into the gym at MCC. Okay. That brings up a... So that's where the concerts are held, will be at the gym at MCC. Yes. Um, now, down the road, sometimes we have our concerts at Greenville High School. If, it's, if we think it's going to be a big concert, concert and sometimes it is, mm -hmm. we do the Messiah every three years. And when we do the Messiah, we do that at Greenville High School. And that's a great auditorium. Yes. That's a wonderful yes. auditorium, a big part of, you know, the Montcalm County area. I mean, if, if you have a bigger event... Uh, Chris Chapman runs a really oh. good uh, auditorium there. He does. I, I remember he's, working there doing the videos. He's great to work and, with. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a great thing. You mentioned the barn, and you told me in the break something that got me really excited. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that have been watching the podcast and catching different things, I... As I drive around the county, I see these barns, and I don't know why I have a fascination with them, but I think that they're cool. And all shapes and sizes, I don't know what one's called or what one's style, but I think that they're really cool. And I came up with the idea to do a little series as part of Discover Montcom, If This Barn Could Talk. And you caught one of those podcasts, and you said, what? <laughs> I said, I know all about a barn, and that's the, the barn that's on the property of Montcalm Community College. Uh, it was the Anderson farm, and the family sold it, I believe, to the, to the college when the college wanted to build there. Mm -hmm. So the family sold them the barn, and in about 1972, I believe, the, the, the college was started in 65, I think around 1970 or 72, they had a, um, a building class from the Career Center okay. and a theater class from MCC, and they turned that barn into a theater. Okay. In That's a little 70s. bit of history that I don't know yeah. because I'm at the Career Center, and you know I, I know different things about the construction program. Um, 
But that's a little piece of history that I did not know, right. which is why I like discovering Macom. Um, but you also told me that something that I didn't know, um, that there was a point based on that barn and there was a something that started where they started logging the barns? Yes, we, in 2004, we uh, applied to hold an, a Smithsonian Institute exhibit mm -hmm. there called Barn Again. And um, we had a, an exhibit in the farmhouse. We also, MCC also uses the farmhouse, mostly for meetings and things like that. Right. But over the years, it's gone through a lot of different changes too, as well as the barn. But anyway, they, we had the actual exhibit in the farmhouse and we would have children come from the elementary schools and I think, I think middle schools too, possibly high schools. Anyway, they would come and look at the exhibit, and then we did Charlotte's Web as a play in the barn. So the kids came to the barn and watched Charlotte's Web. Uh, beside that, we had community people all over Montcalm County from all the different townships who got together and decided they wanted to catalog barns in Montcalm County. So, <laughs> you have my attention. You have my attention. So we sent people out to every township in Montcalm County, or nearly every. Now There's I a lot of barns. Yes, there are lots of barns, and I wish I had numbers for you. I tried to get them before today, but I couldn't find them. But I'll, I'll keep working on that. We made up, I believe that over 50% of the townships in Montcalm County, we cataloged every single barn in the county. And you talked about shapes and sizes. They had a questionnaire they had to, to fill in for each of those, how old they thought the barn was, what, what style of barn mm -hmm. it was, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we have the albums. I believe that we gave them to either the state of Michigan or to MSU. To, to put in their library, and I, I will find that information We're going to be detectives, aren't we? For you, We're yes. going to be detectives because yes. I would love <laughs> to bring that back, and I'd love to be able to talk to people about that. And, you know, I've, I've reached out to a barn Facebook page, a Michigan barn Facebook page, and they're working on trying to give me the centennial barns oh, okay. in, in Montcalm mm -hmm. County. They're, they're, they're working on that. So, you know, if you have a barn, I definitely want to talk to you and talk about the history of the barn. I'm work, I'm editing one right now um, of a barn. If I could go straight across and a little to the right, a mile <laughs> or so over, there's a, there's a barn there. And I, and I talked to the gentleman there, which will come out in a, in a, in a future episode. But I'd like to do these special features. Um, not that every feature on discover.com is going to be about a barn, but I think that's an important. Agriculture is huge in this county. Absolutely. Um, and you know, if those barns could talk, what kind of story would they would they tell? So I thank you for that, and maybe we can connect a little bit more, and you can point me in the right direction on some people to talk to. I'd be happy um, to do that. Because you and I both know I can talk, and I can talk, <laughs> and I can talk. You know, uh, it was a lot of fun, again, when we went back and we did that thing in 2020. Um, as I wrap things up here, in your opinion, why should someone discover Montcalm County? Oh, my goodness. It's so much fun. There are so many interesting things in Montcalm County. Name a couple oh, that, that, that you and Greg like to do or that you enjoy. Well, like I said, theater, Flat River Community Players has been kind of our home for a long time, and uh, we meet people there. Danish Festival in Greenville, we wouldn't miss it for the world. Mm -hmm. We always make sure we're home for Danish Festival. Uh, just all kinds of things. Um, I love the Stanton area. The people in Stanton are so friendly, and you know they're always doing things interesting things. The library there is gorgeous. They've got a brand new library. There's just things to discover everywhere in this county. And every town, village has its uniqueness, That's you right. know, um, and, you know, whether you're big or small, you know, I know around here in Howard City, you know, because of the closeness to the expressway, we're a big bedroom community. Right. Um, but there's a lot of things that are going on here as well, uh, and that's the that's the fun part. Um, 
Is there anything that we could touch on before we sign off here? Um, anything that when you came in here, I know you talked about the barn thing. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with from Val's world? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, that's going on that you'd like to bring some attention to? Well, Val's world is mostly music. <laughs> and I'm always happy to find other musicians in the area. I know uh, my friend Howard Wilson from Howard City mm -hmm. is um, doing some music, doing some performance kinds of things. Yeah. Um, I know musicians from all over Montcalm County and there's just you so maybe much. Maybe you could help me with that because I would like to interview bands. I'd like to interview performers uh, because that's part of discovering. So maybe, maybe I'll become a fly and bug you for a while. <laughs> Or I should say a mosquito. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time today and kind of enlighten us on music and performing arts that's happening throughout this throughout this county. And for those of you listening, you can check us out on YouTube at Discover Montcom Podcast as well as Instagram and Facebook. Um, reach out to me if you got a story. You know, like Val. I mean, you could have been a community member and you've lived here all your life or you, you transplanted here and you've got a cool story. I want to tell it. I want to tell it. Just like it's fun catching up with Val today. So on that note, remember to buy and shop locally. Connect and subscribe to Discover Montcalm podcast at discovermontcalmpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Discover Montcalm Podcast. To be featured in an upcoming show, contact Dwayne at 231-250-9624. Remember to subscribe at discovermontcompodcast.com.